Let's grow, YouTube. All right. To defoliate or not to defoliate? That is the question. Me, myself, I defoliate. I don't have a schedule set week. Um, I just like to go in and defoliate whenever I see my plants needed. So I do it on an as-is needed basis. Yeah, that's what I do. Got them shears ready. Okay, here goes nothing. And uh, like I said, I don't have no specific way of doing this. Uh, I'm just going to start low with the bigger fan leaves and uh, go on to the fan leaves that I no longer want on my plant. And um, what I'm basically doing is pretty much lollipopping, um, defoliating any of the stems or leaves that are in the way and hindering my other nodes from getting as big as the main tops. And when I say mains, you pretty much mean the main uh, tops that's getting most of the plant's energy. And so I'm trying to promote more energy to the inner nodes right here. As you see me, LS10 is going to bend those bigger branches out of the way of the smaller ones. So the smaller ones can get big and healthy too, so I can get a bigger buzz off of those stems. Now, when you're defoliating with your plants, you know uh, everything doesn't have to be trash, but everything doesn't have to be kept either. But along with defoliating my plants today, I'm going to keep a few cuttings, maybe just one, because uh, I want to be able to grow OG Kush again. So that's going to be a main plant that I'm going to keep around because that's just the smoke that I love to have in my garden. And if you know anything about OGs, yeah, that's definitely something you want in your garden. Speaking of favorites, YouTube, what's some of you guys' favorite strains? Uh, either you like to grow or maybe you haven't even started growing yet and it's just one of your strains that you love to smoke. So. Now that you're thinking about growing, maybe it'll be a strain that you might want to grow and uh, have all the time. With growing, I think there's a lot of rules out there, but I think the main rules that people should probably just stick to is the MPK of the whole thing. Besides that, I feel like those are the one, two, three basis the basic steps of growing and so once you kind of understand nitrogen in the vegetation stage and um you know your cow mags for your deficiencies your magnesium deficiencies and issues you have um and then you want to use your phosphorus and your uh potassium for your pks so as long as you understand in the times to give those uh, nutrients to your plants you pretty much don't have any trouble and besides that uh, I kind of do everything that I want to do to my plant uh, I just bought this tent right here I usually don't even grow with a tent I've been growing for maybe over four to going on five years and um, yeah I've never even really used the tent I started off uh, they said you needed this type of light or they said you couldn't use this type of nutrients they said don't do this they said don't do that and I think when you get into growing, you'll learn your own ways and your own steps of growing. Just using the basics of growing is how we all pretty much do it. If you pay attention, you know, some people say they have rules to it, but I really don't have any rules except for the MPK part of it. And I just stick to that and keep it moving. So like I say, uh, a lot of those cuttings right there you see just falling off of the plant that I'm taking away on this defoliation, I will be using later for clones or um, not all of them, but like I said, um, just one. 
And I just like to keep my garden kind of neat. You know, uh, when you first start growing and you get to trimming your plants and uh, you're seeing how a lot of these cuttings are still usable, uh, just because they're usable doesn't mean you have to keep them or use them. So I kind of like to make sure I don't get carried away with trying to keep everything. And then in the end, you have a overwhelming garden where you got plants everywhere. and It just gets, you know, uh, unmanageable. And then uh, all the unmanageable bring laziness. Laziness brings pests and uh, bugs and different stuff. So, yeah, I kind of just stay away from that and just kind of, you know, keep it where it's maintainable hey but that doesn't mean you can't keep all the cuttings every single one of them you can keep it and then you'll learn what i'm talking about as far as having your areas crowded out you know it's only a certain number that i can even grow and uh at saying that you know there's only a certain number that i want to keep you know because i only have a small amount of space to even do this in so that's why i'm working on getting this perpetual going and what my perpetual grow is, is just basically staggering your grows 30 days apart. If you start something 30 days, you'll be putting something in 30 days after that. For example, if you pop a seed and you grow it for 30 days, it'll be in its 30 days of vegetation, correct? All right. You'll take another seed or you'll take a clone and then you'll be growing that one 30 days after the first one so you have first 30 days of vegetation then your next plant will be going into its first day of vegetation after the second month of vegetation with your first plant your second plant will be in its whole first 30 days so by the time your first plant gets done with harvest your next plant will be 30 days behind that plant and if you continue this pattern you can have a harvest every 30 days so that's what I'm doing right now. I have four plants in my closet that I've started my whole grow with. They're about 30 days away from flower or harvest, I mean. And so this plant right here, OG Kush and Mac Alien Miracle, uh, Miracle Alien Cookies will be going into flower this week. And so with that being said, that means this plant will have two months to grow and harvest while the other plant only has one month left. So in one month, I'll harvest, and then this plant only have one month left. And then I'll do it again and again and again and again. And so every month, I'll have a harvest. Depending on how many plants I set up for my upcoming month, will you know, debate on which, you know, uh, the amounts of I get from my harvests, you know, each month. But no matter what, I'll be harvesting something. That's the plan. I think you guys found the right place as far as trying to find out about growing because YouTube, hey man, you can't miss with YouTube, you know, you got a lot of theories that really is never proven, but you have a lot of theories that you can see for yourself, it works, so uh, yeah, YouTube is a good place to learn how to grow cannabis uh, for your medical grows and documentaries and stuff like that, you can get it all done, a lot of answers, not a, a lot of knowledge. Um, I think the best way to learn, though, is dig right in, get you some dirt, some soil, some water, some uh, lights, and uh, get it going and just kind of learn what it's all about. And through um, doing right and doing wrong, you learn the best ways to go ahead and get your, your uh, cannabis. Because there's definitely more than one way to skin a cat, you know? We've all heard that saying, I believe, and uh, it's true. And so, uh, yeah, as I just go ahead and continue to tend to these babies right here and get them in order, you can kind of see what I've done. I've left those five to six tops in the middle to kind of, uh, you know, give them that space that they need, uh, the light that they need, no no hindering from the bigger fan leaves, the big brother leaves, the big sister leaves, whatever you want to say. Uh, but, yeah, she's looking good. And so, as we document these grows, uh, yeah, we're just going to grow together and learn together. Now, that little piece right there is just a half of a pen that I cut in half, and I call it a neck stretcher. I just used it to 
kind of uh, manipulate the stretching of those two nodes in the middle right there to kind of space out that middle area because I knew in the end I was going to want those tops to have some space to, you know, grow out and do their thing. And so, uh, yeah, I like to use Roots Organic for my soil. And here I'm just finished topping off those three gallons, getting them ready to transplant. And then along with that, I use this high yield super phosphite, one scoop to my three gallon pots. When I throw them into flour, keeps all of the yellowing away, uh, keeps them real nice and healthy. So this is just something that I learned during my grows, not something that you have to do or I even suggest you to do because I don't, you know, this is just a documentary video of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. It's up to you guys to do however you do with your plants and, uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. Yes, sir. And here we are, back into the tent. And so I've uh, transplanted both plants from the one gallons into the three gallon buckets that I get from the... Um, Dollar Tree, Dollar Twenty Five. Uh, yeah, everything that I do, I try to just do it the cheapest way. Uh, no need for me to spend all my money to get this bud when I've done it with, you know, the least amount of tools. But uh, yeah, you know, you do your grows how you want to do yours, and this is how we're gonna do it over here. We grows like that. Y'all stay tuned. Check me out on the next videos. See y'all later.